I've attended more funerals than I care to share with y'all. This committee, I could sit here and cry for days about the caskets I've carried of people I loved dearly, deeply, in my soul, good people, not just drug addicts, uncles, friends, cousins, normal people, some people that just got in a car wreck and started taking a pain pill to manage it. One thing led to the other. And how fast it spirals out of control, I don't think people truly, truly understand. That was rapper and singer Jelly Roll urging Congress to do more about opioid epidemic gripping this country. Just this week, officials in two states, Delaware and Texas, reported sudden spikes in opioid overdoses. In Austin, there were nine suspected overdose fatalities as part of 79 total overdoses just over three days. Authorities suspect a, quote, deadly batch of fentanyl is behind this outbreak. Here with us now is Steve White. He's assistant chief at Austin Travis County EMS. Chief White, welcome to the show. Thank you. I want to good talk morning. about the good morning. I want to talk about these numbers because they are shocking. I had to reread some of this information. Your team responded to over 58, 50 opioid overdoses in more than a day. Normally you see two to three. How does your team handle a massive influx of calls coming in like this? Well, we've been preparing for something like this for quite some time. Uh, we have a couple of different safeguards in place that alert us whenever we have a cluster of overdoses, whether it's within a certain time frame or within a certain geographical uh, area in the city. And in this instance, it was about 9 a.m. on Monday morning, and uh, we got started getting the alerts that uh, we were seeing an increase in overdoses. Uh, we were able to deploy uh, like a rapid response team that went into the area carrying Narcan rescue kits and then distribute those kits throughout the area and just kind of saturate that area uh, with Narcan in hopes that if this was going to get any larger in scale, that we would have some support from bystanders there in the area. Okay. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. Uh, it continued to grow um, geographically and start to travel mm -hmm. outside of the core of our city. Uh, so we were very busy watching where, where these overdoses were happening and then redeploying um, some of our resources to those areas uh, to uh, be there in anticipation of more overdoses. Thank goodness for your preparation. I can't imagine how much higher this number would have been. Your department spokesperson described what patients said after being treated. I just want to share it with our viewers. She said there was a significant amount of patients that once we revived them and they woke up, they told paramedics they didn't take any opioids. How is this happening? Yeah, unfortunately, this is what we're seeing over and over again. Um, there is very little organic material in our drug supply now. It is mostly synthetics. Uh, we hear about fentanyl all the time. Uh, fentanyl is in a lot of different drugs. It's not just in drugs that we would consider to be heroin-based or, or drugs uh, that... Uh, there, it's in methamphetamines, it's in cocaine, it's in crack. And so a lot of the deadly overdoses that we're seeing right now are people that don't even anticipate that there is fentanyl or opiates in their drugs. They thought they were buying a stimulant. Uh, and that was pretty much the case here in Austin this week. Um, these patients weren't even able to apply safe practices because they didn't know there was opiates uh, in their and the drugs that they had just bought. That is absolutely terrifying. Like we've been talking about, police suspect this was a single deadly batch of drugs that could be the source of this. We've been talking about this a lot. Even in the newsroom, all of us know someone that is facing addiction, that has suffered from addiction. This affects people of all ages, races, background. What is your message to people in your community about the dangers of fentanyl and buying drugs illegally? Unfortunately, in the community where I live, uh, we have had quite an issue with uh, opioid overdose deaths. So it's really come prevalent in our community, and we've taken a lot of steps uh, to really um, put safeguards like how we responded to this surge in place, but also safeguards in how to get people out of that addiction cycle. Because this, uh, this, opioid epidemic, it's going to touch every geographic location, every, um, 
every economic situation. It, it really has no boundaries whatsoever. And, and every family is going to be touched by this opioid crisis at some point. But we do have some really good answers. Coming off of opiates and getting into long-term medication-assisted treatment programs is actually getting easier and easier and easier. Um, in our program alone, we've been able to do that almost 600 times now, getting people out of the addiction cycle and into long-term treatment and back onto the road of recovery. So there is hope. And with drugs like Narcan that we deployed during this crisis, um, there's not a need uh, for unnecessarily loss of life. Any drug overdose is a drug overdose that could have been prevented. Yeah. Uh, so by taking kind of all these proactive actions and, and, and providing these programs, there is hope for the opioid crisis. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.